Darth Vader. Probably the most iconic silhouette of any film villain. Vader's iconic appearance was sketched by Ralph McQuarrie, instructed by George Lucas to draw a tall and imposing figure. In Lucas's original draft, Vader had no helmet, but after reading that Vader had to board the Tantiv IV, McQuarrie added a skull-like helmet for Vader to survive the vacuum of space. George liked this idea so much that it became part of the character. The costume consisted of a leather bodysuit, a codpiece, chin guards, the helmet, a tabard, chest plate and shoulders, gloves, boots and a cape. You might not have noticed, but the costume has changed a lot throughout the movies. In this video we are going to go through the different versions and how you can easily spot the difference. Many of the parts for the original costume came from Bermans and Nathans. The costume was designed by John Marlowe, sculpted by Brian Muir and put together in 11 weeks. In the first Star Wars movie, now named A New Hope, the helmet looks quite rough with scratches and dents. This is because it was handmade and hand sculpted. It also has more of a battle-worn look. Many might not have realized but Vader's helmet was actually not all black. It was painted as illustrated in gunmetal and black to enhance the helmet's features for the camera. The lenses for Vader's eyes were tinted dark red and the top dome was asymmetrical. One of the tusks on the original helmet was also a different tone from the other. You are not a Jedi yet. Legend has it that when they started production of The Empire Strikes Back, most of the parts of Vader's costume was actually destroyed or picked up by collectors, so they had to put together a new costume. Therefore, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi versions of the costume look quite different from A New Hope's. One could also assume that the quality of the costume was bettered with a bigger budget after the success that was New Hope. In episode 5, the black pattern on the left upper side was stretched all the way to the cheek. The helmet got more polished and rounded in appearance with a shinier dome. The color difference on the tusks were fixed, the lower front grille was made bigger. Vader's chest box got more detailed with the upper right button changing color from green to blue. The lower buttons were made smaller and the right one was colored red. They also added lights to this box. Vader's tabard was placed under his chest armor as opposed to over. The chest armor was also made shinier and the shoulders were made black. The return of the Jedi Vader is more similar to Empire's than to A New Hope's. One difference is an added hook on the chest plate for the chain from Vader's cape, as the earlier versions would choke Dave Prowse. They also removed a silver piece between the middle buttons and above the blue button on his chest box. The costume's shininess appears to be something between episode 4 and 5's in some scenes. By the end, we also get to see what Anakin looks like without the helmet. In episode 3, the green chest button was back and lights were added to all colored buttons. The costume was made to look shiny and new and symmetrical. The tabard was placed underneath a wider chest armor and it appears that the shoulders and chests were in one piece. Maybe you're in Australia. Vader also made an appearance in Rogue One. This version was handmade to look similar to the Episode 4 version. This to keep up with continuity as the events take place right before Episode 4. The green chest button and red tinted eyes are back. 
Rogue One's helmet seems bigger and the fit does not seem as good as that of the original trilogy. This possibly due to reshoots and change in actor. Which Vader costume was your favorite? And what do you want to see next? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more.